Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Relics, and today we are going to review Season 7, Episode 18 of My Hero Academia. It was another great one. Uh, I did say, if you guys saw my last episode, I did say that this one was either going to be a really good one, a really action-packed episode, or a story-driven one, which would have probably been a little bit of a lesser rating. But it was a really good one. Um, if you guys haven't seen it, this is a spoilers review, so go and see it. And if you guys haven't seen my other re reviews for the previous episodes, go watch those as well. Um, as far as this episode is concerned, let's get started. Um, hero of the episode, if you guys saw the episode, you guys know that Pinky was definitely the hero of the episode. I feel like there's no other competition here. She definitely did the most work um, as far as with the screen time that she had. The only other person you can say would probably be like Mountain Lady. However... She didn't get her butt kicked, so overall, I think uh, Pinky wins out in all categories, and overall, she deserves it. She is one, well, to be honest, she's one of my more favorite characters in the show as well, but she is also one of the more important Class 1A characters that plays a big role as far as leadership, um, being a good friend, and her powers are actually really strong. So overall, I think she did a really good job. Again, I'll go over it as we go through the episode. So let's get started right away. Um, so first, we get off the start with a recap. You guys saw this the at the end of the last episode is the end credit, uh, after credit scene, I should say. Which, again, they just replayed pretty much the same thing at the beginning of this episode. So we do lose a few seconds off this episode instead of seeing some other details elsewhere. Um, overall... We got a recap of why uh, Toga hasn't used doubles of Dobby or or uh, Shigaraki, etc., 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 and it's because they believe that she can't. She she is able to use quirks of people who she likes, Toga that is. But in this situation, that is not the case. Um, we don't. I at least I don't truly understand what the problem is but she toga is in disbelief right now um she doesn't understand why she can't use their quirks even though she likes them a lot like she even claims that you know her herself knowing her own abilities her own quirk she should be able to use their quirks should be able to use decay should be able to use dobby's flames should be use, be able to use all for one's powers however for some reason she cannot and she doesn't understand why she's having a, a mental breakdown in fact right now which is causing her to just kind of stand in the middle of the battlefield and the whole goal now for Uraraka is to find her and I don't know if this is like a turning point but this could be a moment where perhaps Toga will turn on all for one I don't know I don't believe she can be redeemed to be honest um, Toga unfortunately is one of those characters that I do think should in the eventuality die <laughs> unfortunately um even as misunderstood as she may be unfortunately she's done a lot of bad things to get to this point and so while i think this is an unfortunate circumstance for her mentally um, unfortunately she is a bad person she is a villain and i think she needs to be taken care of um but overall that was the short recap we got at the very beginning of the episode then play the opening credits and then we immediately take off back to the other uh battle at the same location at again this is at the gunga villa site um dark shadow we finished off with him and his super smashing hit into all for one sending him into the ground presumably and crushing him but of course as we know this is all for one he can't just be defeated by a punch right so we clearly see that he does escape from this punch unscathed and uh, Dark Shadow's power is not strong enough alone. Even with Hawks supporting um, Tsukuyomi inside Dark Shadow, again, it's not strong enough. There's nothing they can do. So Hawks is instructing him to just basically keep him down. Hold him here. This is a fight that we cannot win, but we can stall for time. Because if we remember, All for One used Erichan's uh, injection of her quirk and that is making him younger aka it's going to revert his life until he 
doesn't exist anymore. And how fast that is going? Well, we get a better idea here. Because in fact, as Dark Shadow is punishing All for One into the ground, he actually turns into a very young, handsome, by the way, All for One. This is him, who knows how old, maybe 20s. I, I wouldn't be able to say he's like in his teens, but for sure, maybe like a 20 year old uh, All for One. Honestly, he is a very good looking guy. I, I cannot deny that. Holy crap. And his voice actor, I don't know who it is. I don't follow the cast and stuff like that. But perfect voice acting. Uh, by the way, I do not watch dub. I watch the Japanese with English subtitles. And fantastic. I loved it. I love him. Wow. Just absolutely amazing. And perfect pitch, by the way. So good for him. Good for the act voice actor. But man, all for one looks <laughs> he's looking really good. I have to say that. In any case, so obviously, uh, we get to see that he became younger, and so he starts to make his escape because he realizes time is running out, and the more he stays here, and the younger he gets, the less of a chance he has of reaching Shigaraki. And I don't know what his plan is, to be honest. Is he going to like merge with him somehow? I don't understand what the urgency is. Um, all we do know is that in the previous episode, he mentioned he needs to get to Shigaraki and protect him and make sure he is able to, I guess, transition into All for One's soul. I'm not sure. Because that kind of went out the window when Shigaraki kind of like, when Tomura, I should say, kind of like came out of, you know, molted out of his, his self and was like, no, Master, you're not taking over my body. This is my turn right so we don't know what's exactly happening over there but all for one here believes that he needs to get to him as soon as possible so he keeps attempting to make a run for it and so this is taking us away from the main gunga villa site battle um again they're flying and it should be a significant distance but sometimes you know in anime it's just like that you it looks like they're traveling at high speeds and going a far distance but in the end they weren't that far because some of the people on the ground including like froppy and earphone jack who were just running on the ground they're still there they are present in this episode and you know when all for one makes a run for it he does uh you know make energy blasts and you know they have to try and take cover so they're still there they're still relevant and it's like okay you're running away but <laughs> Everyone on the ground is still in the same location. A little inconsistent, but again, it's an anime thing. I get it. But on the while, these guys are chasing him down. They can't actually stop him. They're just chasing, right? So we see Kami, we see Inasa, and we see Dark Shadow chasing. Um, obviously, Hawks is inside Dark Shadow as well. Um, but then we realize that he cannot. they cannot catch up to him. So suddenly, all of a sudden, someone appears. It is Gigantomachia. Gigantomachia suddenly appears, and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's back up a second. Why is he here? I was really, at this moment, I literally got ticked off just a tiny bit, because I was like, wait, 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 wait. All this has been happening, and all of a sudden, Gigantomachia is here? You didn't even explain how this even happened. So I was like, fearing, like, oh, man, we're going to do a flashback scene, and I'm not going to be happy about that. You better explain how he got here. So any case he comes and he's charging right at all for one and all of a sudden he grabs the piece of the land and he throws it at him even though all for one ordered him to attack the other heroes and he had completely ignored him and this was a big shocker for him and he's like why does this happen well we find out that hey look shinso and red riot are riding on top of his head Obviously, we know that Shinso has the capability to brainwash and or manipulate um, people because of his voice. And because Gigantomachia specifically only listens to Shigaraki or All for One, he is able to manipulate Gigantomachia to attack using All for One's voice in this situation. Now, why didn't he listen to the real All for One? I don't know. It's not really explained very well. However, it has to do something with his heart, I suppose. Um, Shinso does mention a little bit later on that 
he cannot brainwash people's hearts, only their minds. So a little bit of a, again, inconsistency there because that means All for One's orders should have been able to get through to him or at least stop him from attacking himself. But in this case, it did not. So Shinso's obviously in control here for some reason and Red Rat is there to protect him. But that is where we take a break and the episode title, it's a small, was it's a small world or small world, something like that. I forget what it was. In case, title opens and we get the flashback. So I was like, okay, all right, you got my flashback. But again, another inconsistency that I'm not happy about. It says about 15 minutes earlier in front of the Gigantomachia containment facility. And this, this here, just occurred right after Todoroki captured Dobby. So we're resuming the past, in which case we've gone through multiple episodes now past that point. And so I'm like, hmm, that sucks because that's exactly what I did not want to happen. Um, I mentioned it multiple times, what, maybe 10 episodes ago. I do not want to see them jump from place to place and then all of a sudden ignore another location and then have the time just flow instantaneously. This is one of those moments where I'm a little upset about it because you're telling me that in the time that Dobby was captured the first time by, uh, by Shoto Todoroki, only 15 minutes had went by since that moment and to the point where Gigantomaki is going to escape and run all the way to all for one's location at the Gunga Villa site. No way. There is no way that all happens in 15 minutes. And we can see from this scene here, I don't know the exact time, but it is at least five minutes. There is no way Gigantomachia gets to all for one in less than 10 minutes. Absolutely no way. So this is what I was fearing. This is the, one of the biggest inconsistencies for the episode. And it does lose points for the episode because of it. So that's just my, my thoughts though. Again, it's anime. It's just a story. But a little too much plot convenience. So a little disappointing. Either way, it's still cool though. I will not deny it. It is still a cool location, cool scenes. So let's get started in that. Um, the villains here, as we remember, the guys are floating out on clouds. I suppose the, uh, the villain in the center of those clouds... He is the one controlling them. I'm not entirely sure. We don't get an explanation who's using the clouds. But he is kind of like the ringleader here. Um, and I don't even think we get his name either. But he is using sound waves to blow away debris. We actually see the facility itself start to get, you know, blown away piece by piece by these sound waves that are coming from him. At least, or at least the device in his hand. And he claims that these sound waves have the uh, voice of All for One. And they are echoing to Gigantomachia to awaken him. And once these sound waves awaken him, he will break out of his, you know, facility and make his way to All for One. Okay, I get it. That's a, that's a great plan. That's what they had planned. And the heroes were prepared for that. They had these guys already here. But, uh... I don't know if uh, if that's like accurate. You know, I'm not entirely sure if that's how things were supposed to go. But overall, that's what it is. Um, but the heroes are fighting back. Again, we see Mountain Lady getting her butt whooped again. She looks beat up here, but it's like, how is she beat up? We don't get to see it. And again, I that's why I didn't want them to jump back over here without showing us what's been happening over here because mountain lady is a she's big what well, she has to be like at least 50 times of normal person's size and yet she looks like she's been through hell and back already even though when we last saw these guys they were winning they were beating all the villains in fact we even see the villains being captured by mud man inside the mud that is how they're holding them captive so I had a little bit of inconsistency again throughout this location. I really wish they just dedicated a whole episode here if they were going to show all of this. We saw that Gigantomachia escaped. Great. Now dedicate the rest of the episode 
to this location. Show us what happened all the way from back then to now, right? But they unfortunately just kind of rushed it. So in the end, though, I am actually appreciative. I thought the short time we did spend here was actually a little bit well done, even if it was rushed. So I will give them credit. It actually works a little bit. So in any case, we see a mountain lady. She's working with the other students, uh, specifically uh, Emily and Rule. Uh, I forget specifically what Emily does, but Rule is able to enlarge certain weapons. Oh, Rule enlarges the items, such as the wrench that she is literally going to toss Mountain Lady. Emily actually has the power to levitate. That's what it was. Totally forgot. So we get to see that. However, the sound waves do reach Gigantomachia. He awakens just like that breaks out of the facility and before Mountain Lady can attack the villain with the big wrench which would definitely destroy the guy Gigantamachia actually headbutts her into the back <laughs> headbutts her in the back which is funny because her butt's there in the air in any case ignore me <laughs> Mountain Lady's kind of paralyzed from this obviously it's a big shocker didn't see it coming so she's wounded a little bit here um, and we can see Pinky here as well. She realizes the situation is pretty bad. So, you know, the heroes are now like, uh-oh, now what do we do? Well, there's a backup plan. Red Riot actually was the one who brought Shinso from the original uh, battle site back at uh, Troy. And uh, they came here. And he's just hiding behind one of the buildings next to the facility. And he told him to stay here, stay hidden. You are our trump card if things go bad. Well, things have gone bad. Gigantomachia has awoken. So, Red Riot actually comes over here and tells him to, uh, Shinso, we need you to brainwash Gigantomachia. Use all for one's voice. However, there's a sludge monster. The same exact sludge, mon sludge monster that captured Bakugo back in Season 1. And he... <laughs> is one of the villains here and he has now captured Shinso. He cannot speak apparently through the mask, which is kind of funny because it's a mask so he should be able to speak. And it's not like it's 100% covered. But the sludge monster has him. He can't escape. Red Riot tries his best. However, again, as we know, Red Riot is a good defensive style hero or good pulverizing hero. You know, he can break through things. But you can't break through the sludge, which A, is like a liquid slash kind of gooey, right? And that's kind of what we saw in the scene. He couldn't break through. The sludge monster just slips between his, his body. So this is a bad situation now. And we also get to see that Mountain Lady is indeed losing to Gigantomachia again. We know that Gigantomachia is much bigger than her and much stronger. So even though... Uh, she is here because the fact that she is the next strongest to take down Gigantomachia, unfortunately, she just doesn't have the firepower to do it. And so she is getting her butt kicked again by him, and there's nothing that they can do at this situation. And before landing the final strike, though, as we can see from the pictures, we see Acid Man Alma, a final attack move from none other than Pinky. Now, there weren't too many good uh, headshots of Pinky in this episode, but we clearly know it's her. We do see her running around and doing stuff. Uh, we clearly see as well, from the bottom picture here, her hand actually got burned from her own powers. Um, she, she said she pushed herself to the limits and she created a acid shield in a matter of speaking, to defend Mountain Lady. And that acid shield melted Gigantomachia's hand. Uh, we don't know how severe this melting is. Clearly it's not that, like, you know, detrimental to him because we do see he does fight again later, right? But it was enough to melt his hand, stop the attack, and save Mountain Lady. And immediately, she didn't waste time. Uh, Pinky actually starts to run towards... Uh, the sludge monster in hopes to you know continue the plan to use Shinso to brainwash Gigantomachia and she gives us a flashback saying that over the time that Deku was out saving the city 
she was spending time training with Bakugo and Todoroki, learning to use her power. How, how did they, you know, train with Endeavor, learn to use their power in condensed forms and unleash it in a powerful blast? And that's exactly what we just saw with her Acid Man Alma, which was able to protect uh, Mountain Lady, which was really cool. I like that little touch. Again, I am not happy with all the flashbacking. But it is nice to see that she does get some screen time and is important too. And so she's taking this a lot more personal than probably any other character would. As we saw, you know, I forget how many episodes now, a few episodes back when they did show the, you know, the Giganto Machia crew here, you know, when they first showed them, um... Pinky almost got hit by a villain because she was distracted when the guy said that we killed that UA teacher. And Pinky really took that personal because why? She loved Midnight. She looked up to her. She was one of her idols, apparently. Um, and she loved her classes. And unfortunately, Midnight's dead. And that is because that villain and or other villains. We don't know the truth yet. But... Pers uh, Pinky took that personal and she doesn't want any of that to happen again she was too weak she was too weak before she didn't have the power to protect the one and only Midnight the person she looked up to the most and because she was feeling she was too weak she felt like it is her fault she's feeling you know regret that she wasn't power enough to save her and be able to stop Giganto Machia the first time but as we saw that her power has grown and she was able to save Mountain Lady. And so that's what she's trying to do now. She's trying to save as many people as she can. And in doing so, she also saves Shinso. So she immediately attacks the sludge monster. And, you know, because he's sludge, he's kind of a liquid. Uh, her power is actually enhanced and she does break Shinso free rescuing him as well as defeating the sludge monster looks like he kind of melted i don't know if he died or just got like knocked out unconscious but the sludge monster is indeed defeated however there is a little bit of repercussion as we can see if you look real close pinky's skin is no longer pink and i believe this is the very first time that we are actually seeing her skin in well matter of speaking normal human skin form um her skin tone is actually the same as kirishima's who is right behind her and so this is an interesting development i didn't know this was even a thing um, i've seen people i've seen art of her with normal human skin but i don't know if that was like just because the fan chose to do it that way or if it's because she actually is more you know supposed to be human you know skin toned but we do see it here and what the extent of this means we don't know just yet but we do see her hand is still burned from her own powers so she is pushing herself to the limits and damaging herself uh, but in doing so she saves Shinso Shinso immediately goes to Giganta Machia and attempts to give him orders using all for one's voice um, and that was just before uh, Giganto Machia was about to attack and finish off Mountain Lady with his other arm where the right arm was the one that got hit by the acid he still has his left arm well uh, you know by the way ignore the picture quality here this was taken with a uh, panorama camera shot <laughs> and so I, I merged the picture into one picture instead of having it like just focus on one character or the other in any case Shinso successfully convinces Gigantamachia that he is all for one and therefore changing his uh, target to attack the floating villains and basically winning the fight for them. This was a 100% reversal and of course as we know Gigantamachia is too strong for any normal person therefore the villains lost here. And we even see Shinso flying at the top of the screen which is kind of hilarious because he's attached to his arm but Mountain Lady saved again. So that's great uh, after a moment of the fighting which we don't actually get to see the whole thing again I really wish they spent the whole episode on this location 
but that's okay. We see that the heroes did successfully win. Mudman secures all of the villains inside the mud. Um, again, he can use his uh, quirk to basically solidify the ground so they can't escape. Even with whatever quirks they probably have, they can't get out. Um, but just behind him, Pinky actually faints. Um, you guys can see here a little bit better. Uh, her left side is actually more, you know, human skin tone instead of her usual pink. And, you know, she's you know, very worn out. And, of course, who comes to hold her up? Red Riot, Kirishima. And, let's be honest. Let us be completely honest. They're a couple. <laughs> they are a couple. And there's no doubt about that. Honestly, I was kind of hoping, is this is this a moment for love? Is this a... You know, I love you moment. Is this a confession moment? No, it wasn't. Not really. Um, but we do get to see why Pinky pushed herself so hard. And it's not just because she wanted to protect, you know, Mountain Lady. It's not because she just wanted to protect Shinso. But she wanted to make sure that no one else got hurt. And then she can prove to herself that she is strong. And that she is not afraid to put her life on the line to protect her friends and family. And... In doing so, put herself at risk, but she is okay apparently. Um, as she pass, you know, starts to pass out, she does tell Kirishima that uh, she has repaid the debt that she owed him back in the last season, where when Giganto Maki was on a rampage through the forest, and it was her job to try and stop him. Unfortunately, she was unsuccessful, and before she could get struck by Giganto Maki's attack. Which probably would have severely injured her, if not killed her. Kirishima actually jumped in the way, pushing her away and saving her life because he can harden and you know not take as much damage, and he got whacked instead. And so she repaid him for that, and he was all. And as she passes out, he's like, "You're you dummy, you know that doesn't <laughs> you didn't have to do that. That doesn't matter, because in a matter of speaking." He would go above and beyond. He would sacrifice his life for her. Obviously, like I said, they're a couple. They like each other. Of course he would do that for her. So I thought it was a really nice touching moment for not just classmates, but you know, really close friends. And then he finishes off the scene saying that she is his hero. And I was like, that is absolutely sweet. Now what happens to Pinky? We don't know. This is where the scene ends. So I don't know if it's just she did faint, she just lost consciousness, or something. He does say that she is dehydrated, hence the reason why her skin is probably not pink anymore. I guess that has to do with how hydrated she is, so she could use her quirk. But I was fearing, oh my god, could she actually be, like, dying? No, I don't think so. That's obviously wouldn't be the case. So she should be fine. Everyone here should be fine. Either way, she is going to be out of commission. As we saw, she did not make the journey with um, Red Riot and Shinso on Gigantamachia. So she should not be, you know, at the Gunga Villa site anytime soon. Um, but that is where we leave off here. And we return back to the Gunga Villa site as well. Showing off, again, now Mountain Lady and Gigantamachia are working with the heroes here to basically pulverize all for one and we see here all for one's in the dead center at least i think that's him it's hard to tell who that is actually but the whole point is everyone's crushing him with all their powers is not again not to necessarily defeat him but to hold him here until the reverse quirk you know totally kills him and leaves him dead or at least keep him from going to uh, shigaraki um we also get another flashback here as well, where we get the reason why Gigantamachia is now feeling like he's been betrayed by All for One. Um, back when he was first, uh, when All for One first left him, he said that Shigaraki will be your new master. I have to go. I have to do things. And when he is, you know, powerful enough, he will become your master, and you will follow his orders. However, in doing so, he never came back for him. And so Gigantamachia feels betrayed. He feels like 
his master all for one left him betrayed him deserted him you know gave him up doesn't like him anymore kind of thing at least that's what i got and he even starts crying we see tears crying you know coming down from giganto makia's face which is something kind of like shouldn't really be a thing i mean he's never really shown to be like super emotional just always berserk just going on a rampage and destroying stuff so obviously like i said before about shinso saying he can't control people's hearts well he gone to makia apparently is feeling stuff and even though all for one told him to attack the heroes he does feel betrayed and therefore he is working with the heroes instead and attacking all for one and so in the end he does attack him thinking okay well he's probably being brainwashed or something that's how they controlled uh the aoyama family before so he attacks shinso trying to hit him with a light attack how does he know that light attacks work on Shinso? Who knows? I guess that's the choice of attack he used. Just got lucky. And yet we see that Red Riot is there to defend him completely. So Shinso's unharmed. Kirishima obviously taking a lot of damage here. But again, his hardening quirk, that's what he trained for. And he is unharmed. So again, we get another scene. By the way, Really cool scenes that we get to see Gigantomachia, Mountain Lady, Ina Inasa, and Sh Dark Shadow all working together. This is the second time now. And it's pretty cool. You know, it's big scale battle, right? Big scale quirks coming into play here. But again, is this actually accomplishing anything? Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Um, but the episode does take a segue away from this. And we get to see none other than the news reporter from throughout the entire show um we don't see her all the time but she is recognizable very generic female report i don't think we think she has a name but she is here she is mentioned and she says that you know someone's gotta get the story about what's happening and even though they have no job and they're flying in a storm in a helicopter it's dangerous they're crazy but someone needs to go get the story because there are kids, aka the business course from The Coffin in the Sky, there are kids get doing this job, their job for journalism and showing the world what's happening. So they're like, we got to get out there. We got to show them that this kid, Deku, only a year ago was kind of a nobody. You know, he was just jumping in at the opportunity just to be a hero. But now he truly is being a hero. And we get to see... <laughs> as short as it was Deku versus Shigaraki and he, we can clearly see somehow Shigaraki did get his hands back so obviously his super regeneration quirk grew his hands back or his growth did it but his face is like yeah I'm gonna kill you Deku like let me touch you so again it was a small snippet but we do see uh that they are you know battling it out we even see this video feed from the business course in the phone uh feed from one of the other reporters who is also in a different helicopter and this reporter specifically was at the uh the conference meeting between the heroes and the people after the gigantomachia you know incident where gigantomachia rampaged through the city and destroyed a lot of you know cities along the way and killed a lot of people and this this reporter the redhead's uh, mother was i think she said she was severely injured or killed i forget exactly what it was but she was in the path of gigantomachia and she blamed the heroes at that time for what had happened but and this is where a big revelation comes through we don't know or the, they don't know sorry the people don't know what truly caused you know did all the destruction no one was there recording no one was there you know risking their lives to get the story everyone was being evacuated by the heroes everyone was being told to get to safety and they're trying to do their best before gigantomachia got loose and the result was that people did get killed and injured but no one believed that the heroes were not the ones to blame and so no one believed them hence the reason why this reporter specifically feels bad and she feels she owes it to the heroes to get it right this time and again she is realizing that 
there are kids, the business course, going and risking their life in the coffin in the sky, watching this footage, you know, you're getting this footage and playing it for the world. Now, obviously, we know the live stream is coming from uh, La Brava's stream, but the business course is the ones who are there risking their lives recording. And so that is what's special. And because of this, we get to see that the rest of the world is also watching. We segue to the U.S. Capitol, where the president, I presume, is the one watching. And, you know, we know that they refused to send any help after uh, Star and Stripe had died. And so they're watching. We also get to see the viewer count initially when the president's watching. It's currently at, eight, you know, around 8,000. It, it was it was constantly going up through the scene so around 8,000 when this started but then we also get to see other people we see uh, Agpar in the top left he's watching from home we get to see an unknown woman in the top right now I don't know if she was ever mentioned I'm pretty sure she is a new character but she must have some kind of significance because those pictures in the background on the far top right of the of her you were her screen is all might is in that picture so she has some kind of connection to all might i assume um so she may come into play later maybe she maybe she's like a sister to star and stripe or maybe she's someone related who knows i feel like she will come into play later presumably uh second picture on the left we see kids just watching on a computer so again showing the world in a matter of speaking what's happening and they're watching uh we see in the second picture on the right death arms retired pro hero he's one of the guys who you know was criticized and was forced out of hero work because he didn't want to deal with the people criticizing him about not being a hero anymore and so he went into retirement but again maybe this will persuade him to come back and maybe try and help out in any way he can we don't know but either way that is what he's doing he's just kind of there bottom left we see uh people in the evacuation um ua area they're watching the live stream and then of course uh bottom right pictures again more kids and these kids were the last ones to show uh, what's happening and we also get to see the uh we also get to see the feed from their view has now reached over a hundred thousand viewers and this is still rising it is constantly rising and so those kids actually finish the scene here saying who you know where where is this japan and one of the other kids like that's where all might was and so they don't know what japan is or where it is but they know all might and that's all you need to know. That right there is a key to what we are going to see in the future probably. I do not believe that uh, we're just going to you know, not see any more heroes from around the world. All Might is probably going to show up at some point in the next couple episodes. And that alone is going to inspire the rest of the world to show up and fight for Japan. Um, we, the, Like I said, the redhead reporter... She actually says that, you know, because she needs to get out there and make it up for the heroes, she needs to get out there and show that there are still people here in Japan fighting for what's right, regardless of the situation being like impossible or, you know, everyone's getting hurt or killed. And even though people have retired, pro heroes have retired and no one's sending help from around the world, they are still fighting and they will do their best to try and win this fight with everything they have win or lose that lady wants to prove that they are all still there and trying to make a difference so i thought that was a really good a decent segue i have no problems with it whatsoever so that's perfect now as far as their location it looked like they were heading to the gunga villa site because we do see their helicopter later on towards the end of the episode but Overall, we are going to be able to see the world probably come together and help Japan. And this is exactly what I want to see. I wanted to see, um, I'd rather see them 
introduce these guys now like show the world that is viewing you know the business courses footage foreshadowing the perhaps approach of incoming reinforcements from around the world not just us or just all of a sudden someone shows up because someone saw it you know no i want to see just exactly what we saw here that people are watching and people may be inspired to take action and that's exactly what i think makes the show so great and i think that's exactly what they need to do for not just every you know location going forward but overall every country needs to be able to see this to take action and we know that some heroes are ready to do so but from their government they're not allowed to so moving forward i do expect to see more people um but we go back to the Gunga Villa site and we get to see that grape uh, grape juice rule and emily are still with mountain lady how they got there uh it's not exactly explained presumably they rode with mountain lady in her hand or something and then they, she dropped him off but uh she's there but unfortunately we get to see this as well and if you guys know what this is you guys knew already that okay if this is not attacking mountain lady then it's attacking someone else we know how big this head is in the split second what it was like what a, a second and a half perhaps of screen time this is just a freeze frame but this head came out and i was like oh no someone's someone's either dying or getting severely injured and thankfully only severely injured the big head came out of the ground and attacked and chomped a big chunk of Mountain Lady's side. Just like uh, Endeavor, she has now lost a chunk of her side and is now critically injured. We even get through the action from <laughs> Grape Juice. Again, as perverted as he is, he is still, you know, trying his hardest to be a hero. And that is most respectable not to mention his powers are very handy because they his sticky grape pieces off his head um you know they're great for containing enemies and he's here for that reason too but we get to see his reaction to another one of his idols of course for one of the other ones being mountain lady as well so he also too takes it personally but he is now stunned in disbelief that uh, mountain lady could be severely injured and she even says my lady um and we even get to see mountain lady's face as well clearly this is the face of you know she may be on the brink of death this time there's no way she could get past it and we even get to see her completely bleeding out right here um this is just after the attack she is falling to the ground now look at all that blood Again, she is able to increase her size, right? Well, that also means she only has so much blood as well. That is a lot of blood just spilling out of her. That is a severe injury. And so I do fear Mountain Lady could be, you know, she could possibly die here eventually. Now, we do see a little bit later that she's on the ground as well as other people, but I don't see how she can make it out of this alive especially given the fact that they don't have kudo giddy to help transport her to like a hospital or to help transport her to uh um i forget her name the the old lady with the medical powers any case so we continue on all for one still on a rampage he now attacks gigantomachia slicing him up we even get to see that even though this is a like a light attack like he used before this one actually cuts him open and look at all that blood once again all for one is going all out and not holding back gigantomachia should in my opinion he should be dead from this i mean this was a clear-cut slicing attack through his entire body and look at all the blood that is spilling out now of course anime likes to exaggerate so i wouldn't be surprised if he's still alive but that's a lot of blood so now he's down <laughs> and after all of the punishment the awful one was taking look at this those are bones that is an arm that is all for one's arm and those are the muscle tissues regrowing on his arm 
like what the heck is this like what this is where so i i, I told you the inconsistencies um from earlier minus points from this episode this right here this ugly thing right here that shouldn't be living whatsoever this right here minuses another point one whole straight up point i cannot believe all for one can survive through this i don't care that eddie's quirk is reviving him at an increased rate this guy is disintegrated look at him he has no legs literally has no legs he's he's a floating corpse he has no legs he has he was missing an arm his hands are destroyed his entire torso his entire face is ripped butchered and beaten off of his entire existence and yet he is alive Un like there is absolutely no reason for him to actually be alive if he is this injured he should have died and this is where i'm just in disbelief i don't this is huge plot convenience for him plot armor to the maximum and i did not like it at all as cool as it is and i will say it is cool it shouldn't be a thing it just shouldn't happen i mean there's there's no information given to us that aries quirk is able to keep someone alive even if all of their like limbs and their organs are destroyed there's nothing saying that Aerie can repair that. Yes, it can reverse damage, but nothing like super extensive like this. And we know that Alpha One doesn't have a super regeneration quirk like all uh, like uh, Shigaraki does. So to see this happening is just unbelievable. I don't like it, and that's just way too convenient. But he does blast Shadow, uh, Dark Shadow now. Uh, again, he's taking down Mountain Lady, he's taking down Gigante Machia, Dark Shadow's next, and again, this is now hitting Hawks and Tsukuyomi, who are inside Dark Shadow, completely dis dissipating uh, Dark Shadow and defeating them. And so we get to see now Mountain Lady. By the way, here's, uh, here's the end result. She is twitching there on the ground. Um, not as severely injured as we originally would have thought. Um, even with all that blood in the air, it looks just like a cut. And that's kind of disappointing to see because it really looked like she was going to die. But she doesn't look too bad, so I do assume she is alive. Rule and Emily are suddenly defeated. Again, we don't exactly see what happened, but I'm assuming we get to see Inasa try to throw his wind attacks at Awful One and he reversed it probably therefore hitting everybody to the ground. So Rule and Emily are down as well. Kami and Inasa himself, they're down on the ground as well. They're defeated. Shinso and Red Riot, they're down as well. Again, they were on top of Gigantomachia, so it's no surprise that they were you know, knocked to the ground severely as well. Tsukuyomi, he's also down and defeated as well. And then of course, we get to see Hawks, and he is being held up by his throat by all for one. So, again, this is another one of the panorama pictures that I took. Uh, I came out pretty good too, by the way. But we get to see that Hawks is completely defeated. He is down to his bare minimum. Probably no feathers left, practically. He even stabs his all for one with his sword. And it looks like it could have went straight through the heart as well. And again, how is all for one able to survive this? I don't know i don't understand it it just it's too unbelievable but awful one is now fully recovered and even younger than he was when he started the episode and he is able to steal hawks's quirk we get to see it in full action um starting from the throat where he's holding him and then all of a sudden the wings start to retract back into hawks's body to the point where they disappear and they are now coming out on Awful One's back. So and he has successfully, 100% successfully, stolen Hawks' quirk. He no longer is Hawks. And that is crazy to think about. That all of a sudden, Hawks is no longer a hero. He is just a normal person. 
And uh, Off One even states that as he pushes, he just casually pushes a sword out of his body, by the way. And he's like, the more damage I sustain, the stronger Eri Chan's reverse is, therefore making him a lot younger. Again, like I said, he looks much younger than he did literally like, what, a few minutes ago. So he is getting younger with everything that they've been throwing at him. And so he says time is running out. Grape Juice throws one of his balls at his cape and says that, do not take Dark Shadow. If you want to take something, take my quirk. You'll get a cool hairstyle, by the way. Really cool. Love the grapes on my head. You know, just don't take Dark Shadow. And even please, he pleads with All For One. In the face of the Demon Lord himself, don't take Dark Shadow from Tokoyami. And that is specifically because Off One did say that Dark Shadow had, you know, basically had so much power that it prevented All For One from leaving. And so he's like, that is a dangerous quirk. He needs to take it. Not just Hawks's, but Dark Shadow. And it's like, he's like, so now. Uh, Sukuyomi's friend is pleading, don't take Dark Shadow. Don't leave him quirkless. And, you know, that, it, it, Dark Shadow is a part of Sukuyomi, is part of Tokoyami, and he can't basically live without him. And so, uh, it gets to uh, all for one that all these uh, kids are like annoying and just in the way. However, he can't steal everyone's quirks right now. As he stated, he is running out of time. He is running out of time because he's getting younger and soon he will cease to exist. So he needs to make his way to Shigaraki. So he immediately, he immediately just runs away, floats in the air. We can get an aerial view of the ground now. Again, even though we were flying away, this is still the, uh, the Gunga Villa site in all of its glory. They didn't fly anywhere really, <laughs> which is kind of disappointing. But he does make his escape. There's no one there to stop him. He is now going to Shigaraki. What he's going to do over there, we don't know. However, even though the situation is bad. By the way, we don't see Hawks' feathers on his back anymore. So that's kind of interesting. Either way, he makes his escape. And we go back to the ground. And Hawks says, there's still hope. While, you know, pulling sand in his fingers. What hope there is after stealing his quirk, which is one of the strongest quirks we've seen in this entire war, I personally have no idea. That's where the episode ended. And overall, it's really good stuff. Um, I I was really appreciative of all the action and scenes that we got to see. But again, the inconsistencies, the plot armor, and of course, the huge plot armor on All for One, it brings it down for me. So would have been a 10 out of 10. I would have said that this is like the next best episode. I thought everything was uh, voice acted really well. The scenes were made well. but and, and there's a lot of action too. But again, we have way too much inconsistency. The jump back in the time and not in aligning with the proper timeline with you know everything that's been happening in the war. That brings it down a point. And then of course, one whole point again. For the fact that Off One just doesn't die. Like, he should have died. He doesn't have super regeneration. He can't regrow his limbs because he wants to. So, 8 out of 10. Still a great rating on my, my scale. 8 is considered great. 9 would be awesome. 10 is perfection. I would have wrote to perfection if you just dedicated a whole episode beforehand to showing the the Gigantomachia facility, but unfortunately that didn't happen. So 8 out of 10 for this one for sure. It was a really good one. I really enjoyed it. Um, and it didn't feel like it was short either, even though we got a recap. So it was really, really well designed. And overall, it was really good performances by the voice actors. Really happy. Like I said, all for one. Holy crap. Very handsome man. <laughs> He's not being an evil dude. But overall, it was a really good one. Um... Can't wait for next week. Again, everyone here has been defeated. All for one's escaped. What's to come next? Where did All Might go? What's happening with 
the coffin in the sky. You know, there's so many things that are happening. What's what's happening with Todoroki? I mentioned the last episode. Like, what happened to him now that Dobby is here? Where's Endeavor? What's happening with them? I wouldn't be surprised if next episode we focus on Endeavor and Dobby in maybe like half the episode. And then the other half is focusing on Toga and, and Gravity. So that's what I'm expecting next episode. But again, I don't know what's happening. Who knows what's to come. Um, but overall, again, like I said, 8 out of 10 for this one. It was a really good one. Pinky gets the hero of the episode. Well deserved. Did a lot of things and really showed up to you know demonstrate what power she does have. Um, I think that's something that's respectable to most of the characters that we've seen so far. They're all showing off what they can do. And she is no exception as well. Um, we still have some people to see as well. But overall, I'm happy with the way things are going. Like I said, I didn't want to see jumping around everywhere, you know. But it's all coming together. And now that things have come together, you know, we're able to piece things, you know, here piece by piece. And it makes sense. So overall, yes, I may have been critical on some episodes beforehand. But I am enjoying it. It is all coming together. I understand it all for the most part. And I like it. I really enjoy it. I really like the season itself. And I can't wait to see the rest of it. But that's it for this one. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed it, hit the like button. Comment down below what you guys thought. Am I reading too much into things? Did I miss something? Let me know. If you guys read the manga and read ahead, don't spoil anything. But, you know, explain things to me if I get things wrong. I want to know. I don't have anyone to talk to about this stuff. I have no friends to talk to about it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Stay tuned for next week's uh, episode as well. I am expecting a another good one. Honestly, uh, the trend has been good. We've had a 8, a 6 last time, and now another 8 out of 10 ratings. So we're looking really solid right now. We got a lot of the story stuff out of the way, and I'm looking at a lot of action going ahead. But again, I wouldn't be surprised if we have one or two story episodes along the way. But next episode, I do expect a really strong, action-packed episode. Like I said, probably Endeavor and Toga. Those are probably going to be the two, sorry, Dobby and Toga for the villains, Endeavor and Gravity for the heroes. I'm expecting to see them in the next one. If not them, maybe go back to the Coffin in the Sky? I don't know. We'll see. But... That's it for now. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have a great day. Have a great week. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.